All right, YouTubers, welcome back to another Todd E. Walnuts update video. It is Saturday, December 16th. It's approximately 4 o'clock p.m. It's starting to get dark already. It's been rainy and overcast, pretty cold all day today here in the great state of Wisconsin. So got some indoor stuff taken care of today and uh, took a little nap earlier this afternoon and I uh, feel like recording a video now. So the lovely ladies are here joining me as they always do. So I have a, a little stack here of VHS big boxes. I got a couple of them from uh, Grindhouse releasing and a couple from Scream Team releasing. Here in this pile it's kind of a miscellaneous mishmash of different horror titles. There's even, I think there's a western title in there, Spaghetti Western. I picked up a new release or a different release of a movie that I really enjoy that I'll tell you guys about. And for some reason, Hannah cannot get comfortable. So I'm hoping that she will hurry up and sit her big butt down so we can relax here. Uh, I got another little miscellaneous pile here. I got some Disney stuff and some animated stuff. Um, I had a package delivered a couple of weeks ago from a good friend, Chili Billy, and I'm going to kind of do a rehash on those and show you guys those. I'm going to add that into this update video and then I picked up another signed piece of art from one of my favorite artists from one of my favorite cartoon shows. So we got a couple of candles lit. We're in chill mode and let's go through and check out the movies that I picked up. I also picked up a poster too. I'm going to show you guys that last right in the middle there. That is an authentic one sheet from 1978 of Dawn of the Dead. It's a 27 inch wide by 41 inch length movie poster that was actually sitting in a movie theater. I, we'll, we'll talk more about that later, but it's signed by a couple of people. I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. So get yourself relaxed, get a beverage and a snack, and let's go through and talk a little bit about these movies. So I don't really have a plan on which ones I'm going to show first. So I guess we're just going to go from left to right. I'll show you guys the VHS tapes that I picked up over the past month. Um, the first one here is The Barn. This is a VHS big box. And this one has the original artwork. They also had a in addition with uh, artwork from Graham Humphreys. It looked beautiful, but I, I really like the original art here on this one. Um, this movie is excellent. I, I like both of these movies. Um, it's, it's a low budget independent horror film. And it also did spawn a sequel, which was called The Barn Part Two. And again, this is the original artwork but Graham Humphreys did also do a alternative cover for The Barn 2 as well. And um, this one is just as good as the original. These are very fun Halloween themed horror movies. Low budget, but very, very well done. And I'm gonna say that these are some of my favorite modern horror movies. You can see some of the cast of characters there in the back. I still do collect VHS. I collect DVDs, Blu-rays, I collect all of it. Be curious to hear if you guys have had a chance to watch either of these movies and how you feel about them. If you want to leave a comment below. So that is The Barn in The Barn Part 2. Slide these off to the side. Now from the Grindhouse releasing, this is Pieces. This is a Spanish slasher movie. It's a, like a Spanish 
slasher, kind of a giallo type film. It's a, it's very brutal. It's a very brutal movie. This is from the late seventies, I believe. I don't remember when Pieces came out, but it's a very good movie. A psychopathic killer stalks a Boston campus, brutally slaughtering nubile young college co-eds, collecting body parts from each victim to create the likeness of his mother, who he savagely murdered with an ax when he was 10 years old. And you can see the, the gorgeous artwork here, and you can see that they're kind of playing on that puzzle. And if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what they're talking about. The the ten year old boy who just slays with that axe, that double headed axe right there. Um, he had a puzzle of a naked woman. And when the mother saw that the ten year old was putting together this puzzle to see the naked woman's figure, she she started to berate him and, and yell at him and he didn't take kindly to that and he just uh, he went nuts. And so as he's grown up, you know, if you're a turd when you're a kid, you're going to grow up to be a turd as an adult. So that's exactly what happened to him here. And this is a very good movie. That's Pieces. Um, I'll open this one up. Show you guys what a big box looks like. I, I know most of you know what, what a big box is. but So basically, um, a big box is quite a bit bigger than your regular VHS slipcase, the cardboard slip that goes over. Uh, and that's basically meant for display purposes. And then on the inside, basically they just have a, a plastic shell. Let's see if I can pull this out without making a lot of noise here. Okay. So, it, I mean, it's just, a, it's a very nice box. It's, um, it's very glossy. It's very presentable and it looks it looks great on the shelf colors are really nice and then there's kind of like this hollow plastic shell on the inside here and then the VHS tape just sits inside there you can see on the spine it says pieces grindhouse releasing comes in this nice little green tape So I, I like the big boxes. They're normally very, very expensive when you get the big boxes because the big boxes are generally uh, distributed in much lower quantities than your regular uh, cardboard slip sleeve that goes over the top. So usually these are very limited and then when they sell out, of course, they go for double, triple or more the value than, when, you know, I think I paid $29 for this. Uh, $29, which a lot of people would think is a lot for a VHS tape, but I think this one's going for like $250 to $300 now, something like that. So um, it's pretty ridiculous. I, I would never pay $300 for this. $30 is pretty, pretty high, but I think that's a fair number. I think the most I would ever pay for something like this, and this is just because I like this movie, probably $50 is the highest I would go. There's no way I would pay 250 or 300 for this, but I, I love this piece and I'm glad to have it in my collection. So I'm gonna pause it here, put it back together and we will move on. Okay, so moving right along here, we have the Beyond from one of the greatest to ever do it. Of course, that's Lucio Fulci. This is a good movie. I have this one on DVD and Blu-ray. I'm glad to have this on VHS now. This one's still sealed. I doubt that I'll, I will open this. This is more or less just going to be a display piece for me because if I ever do want to watch it, and I do own a, a working VHS player, but if I ever do want to watch this movie, I'll just watch the Grindhouse Blu-ray of it. So this is just a nice little collector's piece. See if, uh, if you guys want to read the back, if you want to pause that, you can read it. Um, just at the top quickly, it just says, The seven dreaded gateways to hell are concealed in seven cursed places. And on the day the gates of hell are opened, the dead will walk the earth. Oops. 
it is the beyond. Then this one here, I could get dinged for saying either of these words. If you say the top word, the software that YouTube uses picks out certain words as kind of like red flags for their videos. So if you say that top word, the C word, you get dinged. And if you say the bottom word, that's also a trigger word or a red flag word that you will get dinged. And not that it's a big deal for me. I'm a small time YouTuber. I just don't feel like messing with the gods of YouTube. So I'm going to just keep moving. But it says here at the bottom, warning, due to the shocking and violent nature of this film, absolutely no one under 17 will be admitted. This movie is, it's a good movie. It's a little bit overrated in my opinion. And when it came out, it was pretty shocking. But I, I don't think that it's as gross or as shocking as a lot of people make it seem to be. Although, I mean, it is it is very disturbing, but it's, it's just at no point watching this did I ever think any of this was real. And I know it was banned in several countries and it was heavily censored, just like it says there, but um, I mean, it's, it's a fun movie. It's part of movie history and everybody knows this movie. I'm sure just about every one of you have seen it. It's the kind of movie, the kind of genre of films that I, I have to be in the right mood to watch. I just can't sit and pop these in and be entertained by them. I have to be in a certain mood, and and that's not very often, to be honest with you. So same thing with, uh, well, I'm not even going to name other titles because they're going to be red flags. But this whole genre of movies, it's a little bit overrated, but they're still kind of fun to watch to at least see these movies one time each. If you haven't seen them, just check them out. And then the last VHS is I Drink Your Blood. I thought this cover was pretty nice. Kind of has that comic book feel from like the 60s. Very, very low budget movie rabid, drug-infested hippies on a blood-crazed killing rampage. Night of the Living Dead meets Charlie Manson in this gore-drenched 1971 drive-in classic. I'll slide this one out. We'll take a look. Again, these boxes are really nice. They're I'm not sure if it's going to kind of pick up on the phone here, but they're they're very glossy, very high quality cardboard box for display. If anybody knows where I can get some plastic bags for the VHS big box size boxes, let me know. Leave a comment below. I'd like to pick up some of those. I have some full moon stuff and uh, I'd like to get those protected. So this one comes in like a little bit of a, it's kind of a different design here in this one. It comes in a like a little black half shell. It's almost like this was pulled out of a clam shell of some sort. It doesn't, it's not quite as big and it kind of rattles around inside here, but there's your tape. So this one doesn't have a spine sticker. It just has the uh, the label on top there. And again, I don't plan on watching this on VHS, although I, I did watch this on VHS before. That's the first time I ever saw this movie. Years ago, I watched it on VHS. But I do have this movie on Blu-ray. So that is I Drink Your Blood. We'll do a quick little recap here, and then we'll move on. Hit this little gem of a movie. <laughs> this one's pretty fun, The Beyond. And this is my favorite one of the bunch that I just showed you guys. And then these two 
If you haven't seen these yet, do check them out. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. And if you have seen them, let me know what you think about them. So I'm going to pause it here and we will move on. I think I'll show my John Dilworth stuff here next. And then I'll put these away. Uh, I was really happy to get this. So John Dilworth is an artist and a, uh, a creator. And he's the, the, the creator of Courage, the Cowardly Dog, which it's a show I'm very fond of. I, I really love this cartoon. And it's, uh, it's a really cool kind of a horror theme to it. It's a little bit darker than like Scooby-Doo, but it's on that same kind of that same plane, you know, that same kind of genre. And uh, there's some pretty cool characters in this show. And years ago, probably six or seven years ago, I purchased some original art from John Dilworth. And this was back when they were kind of still in the, the earliest stages of designing characters and coming up with plans for the show. Courage the Cowardly Dog, and before they named it Courage the Cowardly Dog, it was called The Chicken from Outer Space. So this is some of the very earliest design for the, for the cartoon, and I bought this directly from John Dilworth, like I said, about five or six years ago. Let's see if he dated it. So this is Muriel and Courage, and this, like I said, was before the cartoon was even in production and then before they even had the final name for it and all that and he signed it there with his name and then he's got that little stamp and it says Dilly approved that's his nickname John Dilworth is Dilly and it's the uh, Muriel and Courage pose one all of this stuff was written by John and he says here with gratitude this original animation drawing is especially for Todd Sheedlow. That's your boy, Todd Toddy Walnuts. So I noticed that he's on Etsy and he was selling. This is kind of like the, I guess, final product. This is what it looked like after everything was said and done. This was part of the promotional photos when they had the name for the show. And then this is the pose that they came up with. And this was the very earliest concept drawing of that image so I think this is really cool to have these two pieces together and then he signed this one to Todd the things I do for love stay courageous John Dilworth 2023 I'm very glad to have these at some point though I do need to get these framed and I'm not sure if I'm gonna frame them together I'm gonna take them to a professional so they can do it so they can mat it and frame it and put it in a nice, uh, a nice piece of uh, equipment, something that has real glass and something that has like a UV protector so it doesn't get faded. Um, I don't know if I want to do them single, singly, like frame one and then frame the other one or put them together somehow. I'm not sure, but I'm going to take it to a professional and see what they think. But I'm really happy to have this. really really early stuff so this promotional photo was copyright 2000 I believe this one is even five years earlier 1995 so this was like some of the earliest stuff now this this was not cheap by any means but I am very very glad to have that so all right, I'm going to put this stuff away very carefully. Uh, there's a place that I keep it, so it's away from humidity. It's away from the light. But I do need to get this protected with uh, behind glass. Okay, so we're going to kind of jump over this pile for now. We're going to jump to the smaller pile just because I want to talk a little bit more about The Barn, the movie The Barn. So I brought out a couple of different editions. So this is the newest one to my collection. This is the Blu-ray. Uh, this was a horror pack exclusive. I don't know exactly when this one came out. I bought it on eBay. 
um, but this is the Horpack limited edition Blu-ray with alternative cover art. I, this one was pretty cheap. I think I, it was like 15 bucks. I just wanted to grab it. And I already do have this on Blu-ray. This is just a different edition of it. So I brought out a couple of other ones that I already owned just to kind of show you guys. So this is the the barn that I bought from Scream Team Releasing on their website and it comes with the slipcover and it's made to look like it's an old VHS tape and you can see the the tape coming out of the cardboard sleeve and again I'm not going to keep saying it over and over but if you haven't watched this do check it out and then there was a sequel The Barn 2 also the same type of packaging now these covers here these are the Graham Humphreys covers And then I had a, oops, I grabbed the wrong one. I grabbed the 1031 DVD. I meant to grab the, the barn DVD. It's not that important, but I do have the barn on DVD as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of show that. That's the newest addition to my collection, at least. I think this has been out for a couple of years. Let me see if it says on the back. The movie itself came out in 2016, apparently, on the back here. But I don't know when this particular edition was released from Horror Pack. I'm going to say maybe it was a year or two, maybe even a, c a couple of years, I don't know. But So that is The Barn. Do check it out. Okay, so this little pile here is kind of a little miscellaneous pile. I I wanted this movie for a while. This is just a cheapy, it's a cheap little creature feature movie. It's called The Barge People. I, I really like these lower budget monster movies like this, and it kind of reminds me of like uh, Draniac or Sinjinor, movies like that. Uh, I've never seen this movie before, and it's something that's been on my radar for many, many years. So I think I paid like, I looked this up on eBay, and they were going for like anywhere from six to eight bucks, something like that, which is, is dirt cheap to me. Um, but I did find one lot. I wasn't looking for a lot. I was just looking for one movie. But I think I paid eight bucks for, for four movies here. And so I only really wanted this one. This is called The Barge People. I'll show you this before I show you the other ones. This one came out in, looks like 2018. And this is one that I've wanted for a few years now. Finally picked it up. I don't think this has a Blu-ray release yet. I don't know if it ever will. But I'm, I'm cool with the DVD of it. And then the other ones that came with that. So basically, I got that for the price of what everybody else was selling it. The rest of this stuff, in my opinion, was kind of free, I guess. So this one is called Carney, starring Lou Diamond Phillips. This is part of the Man Eater series. Um, I'm sure I'll keep this. I don't think I own this one already. I don't know. I don't know if I'll keep it or not. But I know that the Man Eater series, they were originally issued with slipcovers, and this one doesn't have it. But like I said, I was only really looking for this movie, so the rest is just extra. I do have this one already. This is called Slither. This is James Gunn's movie. This is a pretty good movie. Another little creature feature. The widescreen DVD edition of it. And this was from the Laura Laura Pierce collection. So maybe this will be worth money someday if Laura Pierce ever gets famous. And 
I get, okay, I guess that was it. It was just these three. So these three came together for eight bucks. Slither, Carney, and Barge people. So I'll put that off to the side. Now these two were from a separate auction. This was, at one time, this one was very, very expensive. It was, it's out of print. And <clears throat> it was going for some pretty ridiculous money. And this has been on my want list, my wish list for a long, long time. This is the MGM release of Scarecrows. They only want to brain yours. This movie's hard to find. It's It has come down a lot over the years. It's not nearly as rare, or I mean, it's still rare, but it's not as expensive as it was, you know, five, ten years ago. It's still a little pricey for a DVD, and I think I paid around 30 bucks for this, which is a lot for a DVD, I know, but at one time this thing was like at at the bare minimum in in bad condition you could get this for 50 bucks if it was in good like mint condition you may have to pay a hundred dollars if it was sealed you may be 125 this was back like five years ago but these have come way down since then always wanted it now I have it very glad to have it for 30 bucks this thing is it's not sealed. I do have these in, in uh, I put them in protective baggies. So, uh, but it's, it's like new. So I'm glad to have Scarecrows. And then I picked up a Spaghetti Western starring Tomas Milian. This one's called The Bounty Killer. I'm going to be doing an overview on my Western collection soon. Also going to be doing a Bigfoot collection video soon. So stay tuned for those. I really love these spaghetti westerns and I, I kind of compare these the spaghetti western genre is a lot like the horror movie genre in that the majority of these movies are low budget and I'll be honest the the majority of these spaghetti westerns are, are pretty bad but there are some really good ones there are some very solid ones and that you can say the same for horror movies they're low budget. The majority of them are pretty bad, but there's you know several that are very good too, and uh, it's it's a really cool genre. I, I really like this. These spaghetti westerns are gritty. They're a little more violent. The um, the set pieces and the the locations where they filmed a lot of these in Spain or Italy are absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous scenery. I'm trying to see here who was the director. Director by directed by Eugenio Martin. And from 1966, it's a Spain Italy movie. So I'm I'm sure that they were on location in both Spain and Italy. Both places I would love to visit sometime. Absolutely beautiful over there in Europe. But I'm um, glad to have that, the bounty killer. Starring uh, Tomas Milian right there. He was a great genre actor. Okay, so um, let's jump into this pile here. So I picked up on eBay a media book. This is a German media book of the movie Gutter Balls. This is a movie that was directed by Ryan Nicholson. And I believe it or not, I, I've wanted to watch this for a few years now. And I think it came out in 2008. Let me double check that. Mm, 2016. So it's, it's been out for eight years, almost eight years. Unfortunately, the director, Ryan Nicholson, um, passed away a couple years ago of a, I believe he had brain cancer, which is uh, devastating because he was very good at what he did. He was a, a independent horror director. He was also a special effects guy. I think he did some work on X-Files and some other stuff. Um, so he was known. I mean, you know, he wasn't just some schlub making movies. He was a Canadian guy and I watched this movie a couple of nights ago for the first time. I, I had never seen this before. I've heard about it before. I, I was aware of it and I've heard people say that it's really good. It's over the top gory. It's a horror movie that takes place in a bowling alley 
it's almost a dark comedy some of the kills are way way over the top but it's funny it's a very wet movie so there's a lot of there's a lot of blood in, in this movie a very ridiculous kills but very creative kills and it's very adult themed in that there's a lot of like suggestive stuff in this movie I'm not gonna say what this is definitely an adult movie uh, and uh, not not meant for kids at all but um, unfortunately uh, Ryan Nicholson passed away a couple of years ago and I believe that they're making a gutter balls 2 or I think they did already I think it but it's only just released like about a year or less ago even though he died a couple of years ago I, I think that they were he was in the making of it or they had some of it filmed and somebody finished it I'll have to do more research on that but I do know that he was part of a sequel to this and it, it was just released like a year or less ago I'm gonna have to check that out because this was pretty fun I, I really like this movie and this is a German media book it was limited to 333 pieces but it's not numbered so you can see here on the front that they're kind of they're kind of I guess paying homage to the exorcist right that's that's a scene from the exorcist a very classic scene sort of I mean it they're kind of they're trying to mock it or mimic it whatever you want to say it's not exactly like the exorcist but it's enough to to let you know yeah that that's what they were trying to do and then here on the inside on the blu-ray disc is maniac they're trying to pay homage to maniac in their own way uh, instead they have a bowling ball and a bowling pin in the killer's hand so this is all in, in German this girl right here was absolutely phenomenal the girl in the white top you get very acquainted with her if you know what I'm saying you get very very acquainted with her in the movie gorgeous woman a lot of gorgeous women in this movie some of the violence th there was a tranny in here there was a, a I mean they, it's 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 more comedy than horror I have to be careful because sometimes in these German media books they will just they'll put you know no F's given they'll just have stuff that they shouldn't be showing so I'm gonna actually just go to the back here there was quite a few scenes I couldn't show so here's the DVD so it is a blu-ray DVD combo and I thought the movie was pretty fun I don't know if I would watch it again anytime soon but I would watch it again and you can see there at the bottom it was limited to 333 pieces this was cover a apparently I bought it used but it's in like new condition this was only like 20 bucks I'll buy a media book for 20 bucks all day long if I like the movie so and this was put out by a company what does that say TT maniacs um, I'm not familiar with TT maniacs but there is a lot of see there it says unrated blu-ray and triple X hardcore DVD there's this is a very very adult themed we'll put it that way and we'll keep moving on good movie though I do recommend it I'd be curious to hear your guys thoughts on that movie so this is the part of the video where I'm gonna show you this DVD that I recently picked up I just did a video on this from this is from my, my buddy uh, Tom who is a movie game guy 91 if you want to see more about that you can go back and check that video out I just did it a couple days ago but the reason I I picked this up was uh, I for one I didn't have it and I always did want this one this is the Dario Argento cut of Dawn of the Dead called zombie and this is the rare Euro cut of the Romero classic you know um, there is there are three different cuts of this movie all together and from what I heard and from what I've when, when, what I've read and I don't think it's available yet there is a fourth version of this movie that combines all three of the previous cuts of this movie to make it the longest 
version of this movie. I, I believe it's two hours and 35 minutes. And it was a fan-made edit of the movie. And you can buy it if you can find it on secondary markets. I think a seller has it on eBay for like 40 or 50 bucks right now. And basically it's just a disc and it's just a blank disc with, I mean, it has the movie on it, but it's, there's no, there's no art on the disc. It doesn't come with a, a case and artwork or anything like that. It's basically just the disc and it has the full complete two hour and 35 minute longest run of the movie. I would love to see somebody pick that up and officially release that. I haven't seen that version of the movie, but from what I hear, it's the most complete in that it kind of brings everything full circle. And from what I hear, the movie starts on top of the mall and there's extra extended scenes and extra scenes that were never seen before that were kind of popped into the movie all in sequence to make it all kind of, kind of uh, meld together to make it a, a great movie. I'm gonna look for that. And if any of you guys know where I can get a copy, let me know. I'm gonna look for one, but I'm damn not gonna pay $50 for it. If I can get it for like $15, $20, I'll do that. The only way I would ever pay $50 for that full complete cut is if like Vinegar Syndrome officially released it in a set. You know, like a, a, a nice edition with a slip cover and I'll pay 50 bucks for that. But I'm not gonna pay some dude 50 bucks for a blank, you know, Blu-ray or DVD, whatever they have it on. But I would love to see that two hour, 35 minute fan edit cut of the movie to make it, you know, the most complete. Um, so I, I have read reviews about it and the guys who have seen it say it is by far the best edition of the movie because it has everything, completely everything in the one movie. So I bought this and I want to show you guys without uh, disturbing the, the lovely ladies here. I'm going to show you guys this poster that I got. And this was this was a grail piece for my collection. Let me, you know what? Um, I have the lights out. I thought it would look better in the dark. So I had to buy a a frame for this. These these frames that are 27 by 41 are very expensive. Um, but I had to because I want to make sure that this this thing is protected. And this is the original one sheet they call it of dawn of the dead from 1978 so the guy that i bought it from got it years ago and he had it folded up in a drawer for a couple decades and i made him an offer and my offer was a little bit lower than what he was offering or what his original price was and then he came back uh, he didn't accept my offer, but he came back with a, a better offer than what he had originally. And I said, yes, sir, thank you. I will take that, paid him, and the rest is history. So, talking too much. But we have the special effects guru, Tom Savini, signed up there. And the one that I really wanted the most, Dario Argento, who did help produce this movie. I talked about that a little bit in, in a previous video. So Dario Argento helped George A. Romero to produce this movie. And in doing so, George A. Romero told him that he could have a cut of the film. And that's the one that's called the European cut. That's also known as the Argento cut. And that's the one that I just showed you guys down here. So that's how that that's how these two kind of go together. So this is kind of a companion piece to that poster right there. And then to the right of the Dawn of the Dead poster is an authentic Day of the Dead poster from 1985. I've had this for many years now. And this one is signed by George A. Romero. So these two posters right here mean a lot to me and these will never leave my collection until I pass away. So these will stay with me for the rest of my days, however long or short that may be. Uh, we don't know, right? But I'm gonna cherish these until I'm gone. So very glad to have those. So I'm gonna pause it here and we'll keep moving. I guess uh, while we're still on this topic of dawn and day, the poster that I used to have up here in the middle, 
this is a different poster now you can see that the, the font is red and this was the more this was the more common poster with the red font underneath the zombie head right there dawn of the dead in red this one was more common now this one over here this was the one that i used to have hanging up there and this one is a little more rare it has the kind of the chartreuse green this one is not signed so although this the green font is a little more rare than the red one the red one that i have is more rare now because i have the signatures on it so i did want to show this i'm not sure what i'm going to do with this one i may give it away uh i don't know i i don't sell stuff so i i don't use ebay i mean i use ebay to buy but i i don't sell i'm not a seller or anything like that but i don't need two of these and i'm definitely going to keep the one with the red font the one with the signatures signatures on it so uh if anybody wants this i don't know you want to make a trade or something i don't know let me know i'll give you the frame and everything it's a it's a nice frame it's got the, the square plastic. It's a pretty heavy duty frame. It's not glass, it's plastic. It's got a, a plastic uh, slide there. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do because I don't even know how much this will cost to ship. And they're, they're, these, these posters and frames, when they're shipped, they do get damaged. And I just, I don't even know if I wanna deal with the headache of, of shipping this to anybody. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but. All right, uh, just wanted to show you the difference between the green fonts and the red. Right, the uh, next edition here, this is the, I believe this is a French steelbook from Studio Canal. This is Night of the Living Dead from 1968. This is the 4K, and it also does come with two Blu-rays. Uh, steelbook. And it uh, comes with this little, little J card. And it's all, it's all in French. And most likely I will toss this card. I don't really save these anymore. But uh, this was a pretty good price. It was, it was new when I bought it. I did open it already. And it just shows an image there from the movie. And on the inside of the steelbook you can see the three discs housed i just i like the way it looked and so i picked it up for the collection it wasn't very expensive it was under with shipping it was under 30 for this which i thought was a good deal i have the criterion blu-ray i never i didn't upgrade to the 4k yet let me see if i can get that out i'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm not gonna try to pull it out, but it's it's a cool little steel book. It says uh, they're going to they're coming to get you, Barbara. Great movie. You guys all know about it already. I just wanted to show you that edition. And the next one was is an upgrade for me. This is a Bigfoot movie. So I've been talking lately over the last couple of weeks about showing you guys my Bigfoot collection. I upgraded a few of my movies to Blu-ray. So you will be seeing this movie again really soon in an update video of my Bigfoot collection. Um, I couldn't find the DVD, but it's here somewhere. And I'll, I'll have time to find it by then. You'll see it again in the video. But this is a movie that was directed by Bobcat Goldthwaite. I don't know if you guys remember him from, he's a comedian, he's been around for a long time. He was in, I think he got his break in some of the Police Academy movies. And uh, this was a pretty good movie. This is a kind of a found footage type movie. And, you know, if if you wouldn't have told me Bob Goldthwaite made this movie, I wouldn't believe you. I mean, it's it doesn't seem like something he would do, but it's very well done. It's a, it's a creepy movie. It's a cool Bigfoot movie. So I upgraded. I got this really, really cheap. This was under ten dollars, and it was, I think it was still sealed, or it was in like really good condition. Here's one that I've never owned before, and I haven't seen this one yet. This is another Bigfoot movie called Hoax. You may not believe the legend, but the horror is real. 
So I'll be popping this one in. This has uh, right there, Brian, um, Brian Thompson. He's been in a lot of movies since the 80s and he was a kind of, he's always kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? He's kind of typecast as like a villain and he's always he always plays a good villain. He was in Cobra, wasn't he? Um, I think he was in Cobra with uh, Stallone. He was in other stuff too, but that's, that's where I remember him from. So looking forward to checking this out. And it does have a reversible cover and it shows the uh, title hoax. So looking forward to checking this out before I upload my Bigfoot video because I'll tell you guys a little bit about these. So this one I owned already. This is another one that's, it used to be pretty pricey. This is Boggy Creek 2 on DVD. This was put out by Elite Entertainment and this was put out back in, uh, doesn't say, but the movie came out in 1985. Boggy Creek 2. So I, I had this already and I recently just upgraded it on Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray. Bigfoot, or I'm sorry, Boggy Creek 2, The Legend Continues. This one is limited to 4,000. I got number 2831. So let me see if I can shake this thing out. There we go. So these, these boxes are really nice. I, I think that image is awesome. I'm not a believer myself. I want to believe. But if there is a Bigfoot, I want him to look like this. That's pretty awesome. Because here, that looks more like... I always thought that looked more like a werewolf, kind of a werewolf transformation scene. Like he's not quite done transforming yet. And you look at his teeth... And it looks like he has fangs and it's just, you know, he's got claws and fangs and it looks like he's turning into a werewolf to me anyway. But this looks to me more like the traditional Bigfoot. You know, the teeth are kind of jacked up. He looks like the hairy ape man that everybody talks about. <laughs> oh, man. I hope this is real, but yet yeah, it's, it's very unlikely, but... So I was glad to upgrade this, although I haven't haven't watched it yet in on this uh, edition. I, I've seen this before. Good movie. I just haven't watched the upgrade yet. So you get a poster. I'm not going to pull the poster out. It's a pretty good sized poster, though. And uh, and there's a reversible cover, that, which is the same image that's on the box. So 1985, is that right? Is that what I said? Yeah, 1985. I think the original Boggy Creek, which I do have here as well, uh, I think that came out in the late 70s. I'll have to double check that. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to pause it because... I don't want to jam this in and just to give you guys kind of a heads up on this and I'm sure most of you know but these these slip cases where there's only one entrance point they tend to pinch a little bit just from the nature of the way that these are made they're kind of pinched so if you try to slide your blu-ray in there if you try to do it in a hurry you're gonna damage you're gonna damage this little plastic sleeve part that's on the outside so take your time, open it up a little bit with your fingers and slide it in and I'll be right back. Okay, so that is the DVD and the Blu-ray of Boggy Creek 2. At one point, this DVD was very pricey, but I think it has come way back down to earth. I think it's in the 25-ish, $30 range, where at one time this thing was like 50. It went out of print and it was like 50 bucks. But ever since uh, Vinegar Syndrome put out this beautiful release, everything has gone way down. I got a couple of television shows, and I'll start with this one. 
This is Reacher, season one. I have to tell you guys, I'm really not the biggest fan when it comes to action movies. And it, it's not that I'm not a big fan of it. There's just so many. I never got into like any of the Bourne movies or I never watched any, hardly any of the Bond movies. Although I, I want to at some point. I want to watch them all, but I just never have. Uh, I never got into any of these Reacher movies. But I saw a preview on YouTube about a couple weeks ago. And there's a Reacher series. And they showed kind of a spoiler, a trailer for a, an episode for season two, which I guess is just about to start season two. And it looked freaking amazing. So there was a lady at, a, at an ATM machine and she was kind of shaky and looked like her hair was messed up and there was a little bit of blood on her hands. And uh, Jack Reacher comes up behind her at the ATM and he, you know, he's assessing things as he's walking up behind her. He's, he can tell something's not quite right. And he starts to communicate with her without anybody else knowing. I'm not going to tell you what happens. I'm sure maybe some of you have seen the same commercial. But what ensues after that is freaking awesome. And I had to get season one to catch up, which I haven't started it yet. I haven't started watching it yet. But this is season one. Season two is just about to drop, I think, really soon here, in maybe a week or so, or if it hasn't already. Um, but this dude, I'm not sure who this is, but he looks like he's going to be another. He's going to be a star. I think he was in some Marvel movies. Was he in the... Uh, he was a character in Aquaman, I think, I'm, somebody was saying, but... Uh, I'm not into the Marvel movies either, to be honest with you. But this looks great, and I'm looking forward to diving into it. I don't know this guy's name. I was trying to find it, but I don't want to spend too much time on here. The guy that plays Jack Reacher, I'm I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, I think if, if the rest of the show looks as good as that clip was, this is going to be a fun ride here. So it's Reacher Season 1 on Blu-ray. And then this is one I definitely wanted to pick up. Um, I've played the first two, The Last of Us games. I've streamed them on my second channel. If you guys ever want to go check those out, you can see how how good or, or how bad I did during the game. I had a lot of fun with these games. I played the first game twice all the way through. It may be one of the best games I've ever played in my life. And uh, part two was disappointing in that it, it was a great game. It was a really fun game. It was just disappointing at some of the things that happened to the characters in part two. And I'm not going to talk about that here. I, I thought that they really made a huge mistake with, with two characters in part two. And, and it may have killed the, the franchise. We'll see. But I'm looking forward to checking out the television series. And this has, or the, yeah, the television series. This has been out for a year or two now I think right I'm just a little bit late to the party here on this one but I'm looking forward to checking this out The Last of Us this is a if you're not familiar it's a post-apocalyptic zombie movie there are I guess uh, groups of humans who have kind of set up camps and or communities and they're trying to reach other humans and trying to find out how to stop the apocalypse and it's just it, the games were very well done I haven't watched any of the shows yet so I'm hoping those are as good as the game or even close to it it'll still be good the next one here is Bigfoot the Lost Coast tapes I bought this used from eBay this is an upgrade for me I did have it already on DVD this is another good one I really enjoyed this one I'm gonna have to give this one a revisit because it's been a while since I watched it and I want to talk about it in my Bigfoot collection video but the blu-ray upgrade also does come with a DVD so I have a blu-ray DVD and then I have the old DVD with the slip cover this was put out by who accelerator XLRator part of the macabre line so not much really to say about that other than it, it I remember it being good and I'm gonna have to give it a rewatch but you'll be hearing more about that soon so here is The Legend of Boggy Creek. This is the Blu-ray. Actually, this is a 4K Blu-ray. This was the DVD that I owned for many years. Charles B. Pierce's original, The Legend of Boggy Creek. The, 
the movie's good, but the the DVD quality is really, really bad on the DVD. Um, so I'm hoping that this is put up by a company called Optical Media. This is the 4K edition of it. And I'm hoping that they really took the time to kind of scrub it clean. Now, I'm not a big proponent of 4K horror movies. I don't think horror movies need to be upgraded to 4K. But in this case, with such a bad print to work with on DVD, I'm looking forward to how clean they did get it. This is a case where I think it needed to be done. This one was comes with a signed card that I knew nothing about. So Charles B. Pierce was the director of both of these movies. Let me see here. Um, this one, I think it came out in the late 70s. Maybe it was... I should have that info handy, but I don't. So anyway, Charles B. Pierce produced this movie. He also produced the movie, um, what was the one with from Texarkana? The, um, the, what was it called? Oh, it's going to bother me now. The Texarkana one with the serial killer that looked like Sackhead Jason. Sundown, something. Oh, that's going to bother me. I'm going to have to pause it because you guys probably know exactly what I'm talking about. So anyway, there, there were three Boggy Creek movies, but only two of them were official, if you want to give it the air quotes, official Legend of Boggy Creek movies. So the first one came out, and then the second one was called Return to Boggy Creek, which was not an official release. It was not directed by Charles B. Pierce. Somebody else jumped in, tried to ride the coattails of Charles B. Pierce, do their own Bigfoot movie, and then try to ride his coattails with the... This, believe it or not, was pretty successful as a drive-in movie. And then when Charles B. Pierce saw that somebody tried to kind of copy and steal his, his work, because, you know, Boggy Creek, Bigfoot, it's not really a... Um, it's it's a character that anybody can use you know it's not a licensed character so anybody can make a bigfoot movie or call it boggy creek um you know it's, it's like if i made a movie called the the monster in lake michigan and then somebody else said the creature from lake michigan i don't have the right to <laughs> creature or lake michigan but so anybody can do it but when he saw that somebody else was kind of jumping in on his game he came out with um we're, oh, do I have the sequel? I don't think I have the sequel here. But he did He did officially, this is just the upgrade of this movie, but he did officially come out with um, Boggy Creek 2. We just showed it already. I'm sorry. I'm kind of losing my marbles here. So this is actually a Charles B. Pierce movie as well. So The Legend of Boggy Creek and Boggy Creek 2 are both Charles B. Pierce movies. So I, I probably made that way more um, confusing than it needed to be. But So Charles B. Pierce is no longer with us. The Town That Dreaded Sundown, that's what it was called. The Town That Dreaded Sundown was also a Charles B. Pierce movie. And so the thing I like, his filming techniques, the way I like that he does it, is he kind of makes it like a docudrama or a documentary style movie. And both of these movies, The Town That Dreaded Sundown and The Legend of Boggy Creek, are both kind of filmed in that same way. So this little autographed card is the 50th anniversary, and it's signed by his daughter. And I don't remember what her name was. But she was a little girl in both of the movies. She was just like a little tiny little thing, and she was just kind of like an extra in the movie. He wanted to have his daughter in the movies. And she was, I'm trying to see what her name is here, if it's on the back. But that's her signature there in the black marker. 50th anniversary. So I just kind of tuck that in here. But that's Charles B. Pierce's daughter's signature there. So, all right, let me... 
pause it here. I got kind of a little bit of a mess going on. I'm going to organize this and we'll continue. Okay, wow, this is uh, turning out to be a very long video. I talk way too much and I apologize. I'll do more showing here. This is also one that I owned on DVD for a long time and I brought it out just to kind of show that this is an upgrade here on the right. This is called Creature from Black Lake and this is another case where the DVD was very low quality, very poor quality viewing. It's almost, to me, it was almost unwatchable. And so I put that off to the side. I recently upgraded this, and I haven't even watched this yet. I haven't even taken it out of the plastic. But this is, I believe, from... I thought it was... Okay, it's from Synapse. I was thinking it was from Severin Films, but it's it's from Synapse. And Synapse is, is great. They have excellent transfers of their movies. So this is the Blu-ray... I don't know if this is a 4K or not. Let's uh, see if we can open this up here. Should be able to open it up with one hand. Been doing this long enough. I should be able to own this, right? Let's see. This is just uh, poor quality viewing for the, the Tidy Walnuts viewers out there. Okay, I saved you guys from that frustration. So I finally got the plastic off, and here's the slipcover. This is beautiful. This is really, really nice. I love the colors there. That whole cover, the art, everything looks really good. It has kind of a nice gloss to it. I really like this. I think it's great. And here is the Amore case. And on the inside, you get the Blu ray. And there's no reverse, so you don't really need a reverse on this. And you have a really thick booklet of the 2022 product catalog from Synapse. Not going to go through all of that, but I love it when they put this stuff in. Um, companies don't do that anymore, so I hope Synapse keeps that tradition alive. Just for us collectors that that like that kind of retro feel, to find a catalog of Anchor Bay used to do that. Other companies used to do that, but nobody does it anymore. I'm really glad to see that Synapse is still doing that. So thank you, kudos to you, Synapse, for for keeping that alive. And you can, so it's a 4K transfer from the original 35 millimeter negative. You get audio commentary. There's an all new featurette called Swamp Stories. There's original theatrical trailer and a radio spot. And so this movie's from the late 70s, 1976. And it is all region if my friends overseas would like to, to buy one for their collection. So, and I'm sure maybe many of you do already have this. I'm glad to own this. That, that's a beautiful addition. So here again are the two side by side. The next one is another upgrade. This one I imported from the UK. So this is the DVD that I had. It's called Throwback. The Evolution of Terror is here. This is another really good Bigfoot movie. The Bigfoot in this movie looks more ape-like. You know, like you can see that oh, that almost looks like a silver back or something. And you can see the very similar cover to um, the Blu-ray upgrade. The one on the left, this is a US DVD release. I've had this one for a while. It's from MVD Visual. I don't think we, I'm not sure if we have a Blu-ray upgrade in the U.S. So I, I imported it here. And this one's region B locked, but I do, I do own a couple of different region free Blu-ray players and I recommend you guys do the same. And uh, make sure you get it 4K as well. 
So that is throwback. Gonna have to revisit that. It's been a minute since I watched that one. And then the last one for the horror stuff that I picked up. Um, this is Yeti. I own this already. This is an older Bigfoot uh, giant of the 20th century. This is a really old Bigfoot movie. And I just recently, the DVD came out 10 years ago, and I just recently upgraded this Code Red Blu-ray. This is one that I've wanted for a long time. I, I don't know why it, it took me so long to get it. I usually get the Code Red stuff really early. But yeah, this one's been out for a while already. So this is just the Blu-ray upgrade of this one. So it comes with this nice slip cover. Nice work, artwork there. In the footsteps of King Kong and Godzilla comes Yeti. So when I show you guys my Bigfoot collection overview, it's going to be Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti, Yowie. I, I believe they call him Yowie in Australia. It's going to be all of that wrapped up into one video. So you're going to see the Yeti stuff and the Sasquatch stuff. To me, it's all the same. The, the big hairy beast, the hairy man or whatever they call it. So I'm looking forward to checking this out, seeing how the Blu-ray transfer looks. So I'm going to pause it really quick. We'll do kind of a quick recap, and then I'll show you the Disney stuff, and I'll re-show the stuff that Billy, Chili Billy sent me, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, just to kind of recap a little bit, I have Yeti, giant of the 20th century. I upgraded throwback. I upgraded creature from Black Lake. I upgraded Bigfoot, the Lost Coast tapes. I upgraded the Legend of Boggy Creek, which is going to be pretty amazing, I think, going from a, a really shoddy DVD quality to a 4K. That's kind of that's going to be like unbelievable. It's probably going to look like a whole different movie. I upgraded Boggy Creek 2 and the legend continues. I upgraded Willow Creek and I couldn't find the DVD, but trust me that's an upgrade. And one I've never owned before called the Hoax. And one I own many times. This is Night of the Living Dead, and then a couple of television shows, The Last of Us from HBO, and Reacher, which I believe is on Netflix. I'm not 100% sure about that. So let me know what you guys think about those, and then stay tuned. I'm going to quickly go through some Disney titles, and we're going to wrap it up with uh, the stuff that Chili Billy sent to me. Okay, so let's wrap this up. This is a pretty long video, so we'll just kind of go through this really quick. I did a separate unboxing for this. If you're interested in hearing more about it or my thoughts about it, just go back and check a couple videos ago I uploaded this. Um, the complete Rankin Bass Christmas collection includes 18 movies. All of the Rankin Bass specials I grew up with as a child. My brother and I used to watch these every um, holiday season. I picked up a couple I guess uh, these are from the Disney Movie Club. And this is the 4K Blu-ray of Haunted Mansion. I still haven't watched this yet. Looking forward to it, though. There's a great cast of characters here. you got the lovely Rosario Dawson, uh, Tiffany Haddish. She's gorgeous. I, I really like Owen Wilson and Danny DeVito. This is the Disney Movie Club exclusive, I think. This is the 4K of The Little Mermaid. This was the recent... Um, I guess remake of it you get uh, two versions of the movie the original theatrical and you get a sing-along edition so that's cool I'm glad I have that I have the fork crate for <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm running out of gas here running out of steam at the finish line here this is the 4k upgrade of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs this cover looks really great love that and somebody pointed out, I think it was Ing, my boy Inga from uh, Norway. He is uh, Arrow Throughhead. He 
um, alerted me or let me be aware that I didn't have Pinocchio in my Disney DVD collection, so I did purchase a couple of these on uh, on the secondary market. I got the Platinum Edition DVD, which is the 70th anniversary. Um, this is the two disc DVD limited time edition. That's a really nice looking cover. And I also got the limited issue DVD. I think I only paid five bucks for this. So that was a steal for me. I, so thank you for uh, letting me know, Inga. Uh, my boy Ing, Ing is in the house. Um, and then Chili Billy sent me a package last week, which included Night of the Eagle from a company called Imprint, which I'm, I'm really impressed with. They have very high quality releases. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm glad to have that. I have a double bill here, the Giant Gila Monster and the Killer Shrews from Film Masters. I have the Hellraiser Quartet of Torment. This is really gorgeous. What a beautiful set. And I did unboxings of all of these. You can go back and look at some of my um, recent videos. And then I, I already had the Dimogen Trilogy from Arrow Video. I had kind of the, uh, I guess this was kind of the, I don't want to call it bare bones because it's still a really nice set. But it's, um, I guess it's a little less fancy than the original set, which ended up selling out. And this Chili Billy sent this to me. This is a more kind of a deluxe box set of the Dimogen Trilogy. And I also did unboxings of those. So you can go check those out. So that, I believe that's everything. I'm, I may be missing something. But if I am, I'll just throw it in with the next video update. So... Thank you very much for dropping by and spending a little bit of time with me. I always appreciate that. It's always good to hear from you guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. I hope you have a safe week next week coming up on Christmas season. Hope you guys all have all your uh, shopping done and hope you're able to spend time with friends and loved ones and to have fond memories of those who are no longer with us. Uh, it's always important to remember 